Hey guys, Tubby of the Nerdy Birds side here, and I'm sitting with my man Foolish of Baton Rouge, thanks to the antidote.com. We're gonna spend a little bit of time right now kicking the real. We have a, a lot of things that are going on in the controversial sense, not only in the local aspect, but in the more national aspect as well. So, you know, we're, we're kind of getting to something that's really all over the place right now that a lot of people are trying to avoid, that you can't really avoid. The NFL and a, a lot of the controversial things that are going on with it from the Jamel Hall, you know, a, a black journalist who went under fire for actually representing and articulating on behalf of athletes some of the things that they felt and some of the things that they, you know, needed to say. We also have, you know, the president making his comments in regards to how he felt about team owners suspending, firing, and getting rid of any player that, you know, had the option to protest or open or freely speak the way that they felt about the protest. Yeah. And we also have from Kaepernick and the things that he's going through to a lot of NFL coaches really starting to say, okay, this is enough and starting to take a knee with their players. How do you feel, you know, as a black man in America, understanding right from wrong, understanding that injustice is very much so a, a real thing in the reality that we live? You know, how does it make you feel to see the uprise, the, the back and forth, the up and down, and, you know, the lack of understanding, so to speak, where this protest comes into play? Uh, like you say, it's just a lack of understanding. Like, you know, we have these, we have these rights, you know, that the Constitution gives us, you know, and with the Kaepernick situation, he just exercising his right. I watched Barack Obama, you know, the best president in the world, I think. I, he gave his opinion on it and I agree with him, you know, totally. It's just a point of finding common ground. Like, don't get me wrong, I understand why people are mad, you know, because they got people that gave their life, you know, for representing that flag in this country. But at the same time, you know, on the, on the backhand side, you know, was not Facebook, Facebook value, I say. Like, you got people getting killed. Like, man, if you ever, the, in Baton Rouge, it's crazy, man. People get killed every day and some of the, sometimes, most of the time, it's from the police officer. The police are put in position, you know, to uphold these laws and morals, you know what I mean? And, you know, they, they, take, a, they take it to their advantage, like, you know, I'm the cop, who gonna tell me something, you know what I mean? You know, and like I said, with the captain in the situation, he voicing his opinion, you know, that you know, nobody can take that away from him, because it's his opinion, you know? He wants to shed light on what's going on, on the things that everybody just sweeping under the rug. Right. Like, these are real issues. Like, people are really getting killed for nothing, you know, for being a different color, man. You know, it's not, isn't it not just black people, it's white people too, you know? Because, like, when it's day and age, it's wicked, man. The Trump situation, you know, how he was his opinion, you know, I never seen the president be so involved with, you know, with the internet like he has, you know, when the guy wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning just to tweet some nonsense, you know what I mean? You know, for him telling the NFL owners how they should run their business, Come on, man, what they call it, um, I think it's what the Big Brother, I think they call it, when people just take control. Yeah, yeah, take control of all of your mm -hmm. stuff, man. Come on, let these people run it how they see fit. Right. If they if they figure it's nothing to worry about, who are you to tell them about their billion dollar business, right. man? Uh, although you have, you know, you're a good businessman. I get at the Trump, he is a good businessman. But when it comes down to social issues, I think that, you know, it's just hush. Pass with your heart. Yeah. <laughs> Now, with that being said, and understanding on a, on a local scale, you know, you touched on briefly, you know, the way that the police kind of handle the bouts of their positions and a lot of the ways that they may or may not handle certain situations in accordance to what is humane or justified, yeah. so to speak, so far as law terms go. But when you start thinking about being at home here in Baton Rouge, We've always kind of seen the ups and downs of the, the murder rate here in the capital city. But right now, we're actually knocking on numbers to break records for some of the highest murder rates that we've ever seen as a city. And when you think about a city, we're not very large in comparison to a lot of the other places nice. where cities are listed. So, you know, being from here, being a parent, being a black man, how do you feel knowing that we're really knocking on the door to just complete chaos in the murder world right here in the capital city? Man, I feel like, man, you can't say as a parent, man, I'm just gonna move and go somewhere, you know, because all around the world, you know, it's, it's violence, you know what I mean? 
it's just the things you do, you know, like if I'm out there in the streets, I'm gonna get the big part of the bag when it comes down to trouble. Mm -hmm. I can be in the house all day, but you know, people will come back like, man, that's a nice house. I wonder how you got that, I wonder what's in there. You know, and that big part of the bag come up, you know, from burglaries and everything. It's just, like growing up in Baton Rouge, you seen it all, you know, like no matter what it was, murders, drugs, you know, police brutality, it just, you can't say I want to get away from it, you know, because there's nowhere you can go. Like it's, it's, it's all on what you do. Like, like man, like no lie, the Alton Sterling situation. I seen this firsthand. I recorded it. The he, people don't know, but the first time he got hit, uh, got hit with the, the charges was in front of my house on Rosenwall. Uh, he was selling CDs. That's how he was doing. But he had a gun this time. He actually had a, a big gun. Um, and the cops, they took it from him and they beat him up. They didn't kill him. You know, it, 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 when it comes down to wrestling and tussling, they just, you know, took the gun off his, off his side, you know, and it, he was resisting. And, you know, they ended up getting to the scuffle, but what no gun shots fired. Like, then, you know, I'm out of town and I see the second time, you know, that he get into it with the police, he ended up losing his life, saying he reaching for a gun. And you can actually see that the guy was restrained. Like, man, it's all over me how the cops be feeling at the time. Like they feel like they can get away with it, they gonna do it. Like they say, they have the power to uphold the law. But well, who's the police that police the police? Right. Like these guys, it's just crazy, man. And like, being from Baton Rouge, you know, like you say, you, you people hustle in different ways. You know, some people hustle, actual hustle is to jack. Some people actually hustle just to sit at your house and wait for you to leave so they can break in your house. I know this, hey, I'm a convicted felon since high school, man. I was, a, we call it B and E. Like we used to really sit out like we going to work, wait for you to leave your house, go in and then take everything. Like, but like I said, I got older and I probably knew that shit, that shit was foolish, you know? Hence the name foolish, you know? The shit you do in the past is be foolish, like. But man, like we, we, we as a community, you know, gotta put more, more stuff back into the community. I'm not saying like, we ain't gotta give money all the right. time. Have events where, you know, like they have kids, you know, come through and just be safe for like four hours out of time. That's why, uh, man, I, I applaud those, those, those great football and basketball coaches for, for the time they had those kids away from that environment at home. You know that they not getting in no trouble. They doing something positive, something that they can help take them out of the situation that they in, you know. Like my nephews, they, they stay in elbow apartments. Man, it's wicked in elbow. You know, you can come outside and get shot. People, it, it, it's been like that lately. You know, they, people lose their life every day over there in Scotland, man. And for them to be away from that for where they be 30 minutes, you know, at that break park, I applaud that. You know, something positive, man. It just take people giving back. You know, when people like to give back, they all, oh, man, I ain't got no money. It's just time, it's just time. Yeah. Now, taking it to a lighter note in regards to Scott Dunville, coming up, we have Southern Home coming. Okay. And I know that you're not only a native of Scott Dunville, but you also walk the stuff and grounds at Southern University. Yeah. So, kind of going to the detail of what the culture means for you and what homecoming at Southern means for you. Man, homecoming, that's like the Super Bowl. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like, homecoming, if you got a statement you won't make, you do it at homecoming. If your car been in a shop for for years and you want to bring it out because you think it's gonna be the baddest thing on wheels, homecoming when you, when you debut it at. You know, homecoming like it's so it's so friendly out there at times, you know what I mean? Away from the bull, you know, because every homecoming is gonna be bullshit, you know, people in disagreements, you know, they follow everybody, but for the best side of homecoming, talking about you can be a stranger walking up the street, like be hungry, you and your partners, and like seeing somebody cooking food, like, man, how much y'all selling food for? Like, ladies be like, baby, we sell this to your God, ain't gonna bless us. Like, you can, it's just so friendly out there. You can go to anybody, anybody trailer that they got doing our tailgate, get a, get a plate to eat from. Like, walk up the street, you know, I think it's probably other than Mardi Gras, the only time you can have a beer in your hand up the street, you know what I mean? Like, it's so, so family oriented, like, but at the same time, you gotta watch yourself, because I got jealous people out there, like, you could be on point, you know, and somebody come out of nowhere and you scuffle with them and end up getting killed like that. It's, it's homecoming is just that event for everybody in the city. Like, if you want a big crowd to shoot a video at, homecoming. You want a big crowd, you know, to showcase your skills, get a float. 
go to homecoming. Homecoming is that it's that event in Baton Rouge. Other than the Bayou Classic, you know what I mean? I mean, with those two events, like those two right there, that's 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 a national stage for people out the hood. Like, it's a big event, man. It's just homecoming. Now, will you be at Southern's homecoming? Oh yeah, I was definitely gonna be at homecoming, man. You can't miss a homecoming, bro. Like, it's so much going around outside of the football game. It's, you gotta be a part of it, man. You can't say you from Baton Rouge. And don't go to homecoming. homecoming. Man. Homecoming is it. It is where it's at. It is where it's at. That's it. You guys from Foolish. He yeah. will be at Homecoming. You guys need to make sure that you come and show some love for the Jaguars this weekend. Because they're going to be working hard on the field. We're going to have a lot of community involvement so far. I know that the antidote is going to be out there. I'll be out there with the Navy Very excited. A lot of artists will be doing some debuts and some drops. So make sure you come through and you show some yeah. love at Southern's Homecoming. Keep the foolishness at home. Yeah, keep it at home, please. Keep the foolishness at home. Enjoy yourself. But we're going to go ahead and wrap up with a game that a friend of mine recommended a few months ago, and I think that it's going great. The game is called Association. Okay. So basically what we're going to do, I'm going to drop some names, and you have about three seconds to give me a word that you feel best associates that particular artist or event. You want to play? Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm all in. All right. Let's go. Okay, so Trump. Oh, uh, yeah. Jamal, Jamal, excuse me, Jamal Hill. Of uh, TheAnecdote.com. Oh, uh, family. Young Hustler. Oh, uh, family. <laughs> family, family. Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights are uh, inspiration. The Bando. The Bando is the hustle. Callan Kaepernick. Oh, uh, uh, Kaepernick, uh, a leader. Cardi B. On the rise. And last but not least, in the house. Uh, <laughs> no, no. There you have it, guys. <laughs> Association Wordplay. It's been a blast kicking it with you, Foolish. Oh, man, it's been a blast. It's been a pleasure. We hope that you guys have had as much fun as we have and you've been inspired as much as we have. Make sure that you guys tune in right here with the antidote.com for more updates and exclusive drops right here with the Nerdy Bird. Amen.